When we solved one-dimensional constant acceleration problems, we made a list of four out of six letters and then easily solved every problem. Here is the procedure for solving two-dimensional force problems. The answer to every homework problem in Chapter 5 is Newton's second law. We have the sum of the vector forces equals some pushes and pulls P. There is one weight W which points straight toward the center of the Earth and is due to the gravitational attraction of the mass toward the center of the Earth plus the spring force minus Kx plus some tensions T whose fundamental cause is really the electric force of the displaced atoms and molecules within the string material, plus the normal force N, which is perpendicular to the surface. There's usually only one surface and one normal force, plus the frictional force little f. The normal force varies from one situation to another, but the frictional force is always mu times N which means that the frictional force is proportional to how greatly the two surfaces are squeezed together. The sum of the vector forces equals mass times the vector acceleration. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force. When solving problems involving forces, we first draw a picture, decide which secret invisible forces are present, and show and label them. It's crucial to show the XY coordinate system and indicate the positive X and Y directions so that they point consistently throughout the solution. We list known and unknown information. Apply Newton's second law to this system. And again, we use a coast one vector equation. Triangle of the forces equals MA is equivalent to three scalar equations. We have the sum of the X components of the vector forces equals mass times the x component of the acceleration. In the y direction, we have the sum of the y forces is mass times the y acceleration. And in the z direction, we have the sum of the z forces equals mass times the z component of acceleration. Since we draw in two dimensions, we usually just have two-dimensional problems. Typically, we first solve the sum of the y forces for the normal force n which is needed in the x equations involving friction, little f equals mu times n. After summing the forces, we have n equations in n unknowns. Solve the equations for the unknown quantities using direct substitution, or when lucky, by adding or subtracting pairs of equations. We put numbers into the equations and then decide if the answer is reasonable and check that calculated forces point in the right directions. To practice, you might go to the Colorado University website. It seems like a lengthy procedure, but if we don't use an organized approach to solve problems, it means we have to solve the entire problem in our head. With each successive year of college, the problems get more and more lengthy taking 10 minutes per problem at first, and then one hour per problem, and then 10 hours per problem. In just four years, you'll be building bridges and automobiles. We can't build a bridge using only calculations that are done in our head. This mass is suspended by these two strings. We use a protractor to measure these two angles. A 10 kilogram mass is suspended by two strings. What is the tension in each string when theta 1 equals 22 degrees and theta 2 equals 57 degrees? Sum the vector forces that act on the mass. Steps 1 to 3 in our procedure. Draw a picture. State the xy axis. We'll choose the usual xy coordinate system. And label the secret invisible forces. Any vector or component that points in the upward vertical direction also points in the positive y direction. Any vector or component that points leftward and horizontal also points in the positive x direction. The Earth's gravity pulls the mass straight downward, producing its weight, mg. Tension T1 pulls the mass in this direction. 
and T2 in this direction. Step 4 lists the given information. We have M equals 10 kilograms, theta 1 equals 22 degrees, and theta 2 equals 57 degrees. The unknowns are the two tensions, T1 and T2. Step 5 Sum the X components of forces. For starters, we want to know the X and Y components of this force, T2. We form a triangle here. The magnitude of the tension T2 is the hypotenuse of the triangle. The X part of this tension T2 is adjacent to the angle theta2, so T2 sub X equals T2 cosine theta2, and it gets a plus sign because this component points in the positive X direction. The X component of vector T1 gets a minus sign because it points in our minus X direction. And again it gets a cosine because this side of the triangle is adjacent to angle theta 1. The sum of the X forces is plus T2 cosine theta 2 minus T1 cosine theta 1 equals mass times the X component of acceleration. But these blocks are not moving. Their acceleration is zero, so the sum is zero. The sum of the Y components of forces. What is the Y component of tension T1? This side of the triangle is opposite angle theta 1, so we write T1 sine theta 1, and it gets a plus sign because it points in the positive Y direction. What is the Y component of tension T2? In the same way, we write plus T2 sine theta 2. The weight mg points entirely in the minus y direction, so we write minus mg. The sum of the y components of forces are T2 sine theta 2 plus T1 sine theta 1 minus mg equals mass times the y component of acceleration, which is zero, so the sum of the components is zero. Here are the two equations again. Step 6. There are two equations for the two unknowns, which are the tensions T1 and T2. We use the substitution method to find these two unknowns. Solve the first equation for T1 equals T2 cosine theta 2 divided by cosine theta 1. Wherever we see a T1 in the second equation, we replace it with this combination. We get T2 sine theta 2 plus T1, which is T2 cosine theta 2 over cosine theta 1 times sine theta 1 minus mg equals 0. If you like, the sine over a cosine is a tan theta 1. We solve for T2 by first factoring it out as T2 times sine theta 2 plus cosine theta 2 sine theta 1 over cosine theta 1 equals mg and get T2 equals 93 fig newtons. Be sure that your calculator is using degrees and not radians. Now that we know the numerical value of T2, we calculate T1 equals T2 cosine theta 2 over cosine theta 1 and we get 54 newtons. The tension in string 2 is larger than the tension in string 1 because theta 2 is more vertical than theta 1. The box is being pulled across the floor. Which Secret invisible forces are acting on the box. Gravity pulls the box downward against the floor, and in reaction, the floor pushes upward on the box with the normal reaction force. The tension in the string is acting at angle theta. As the box moves, the kinetic frictional force opposes the motion. Here is the free body diagram. Since the box is accelerating to the left, we'll put the positive x-axis toward the left. Given that the weight W equal mg equals 19 newtons, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 
mu k equals 0.87, tension t equals 33 newtons, and the angle theta equals 32 degrees. What is the acceleration? There is no motion or acceleration in the y direction, so a sub y equals 0, and we don't have to bother putting the x subscript on a sub x. Typically, we first sum the y components of forces so that we can calculate the normal force n, which is needed to calculate the frictional force, little f sub k equals mu k n. The y component of the tension is t sub y equals plus t sine theta. It is positive because it points in the plus y direction, and we choose sine theta because t sub y is opposite from the angle theta. We have the sum of the y components of forces equals the normal force n, which gets a plus sign because it points in the positive y direction, and the weight w, which gets a minus sign because it points in the minus y direction, plus t sine theta equals mass times the y component of acceleration, which is zero. We solve for n equals w minus t sine theta. If the tension t equals zero, then n equals w here. The non-zero tension is partially supporting the weight of the box and reducing the normal force n, which is a measure of how greatly the two surfaces are squeezed together. The normal force n varies from one situation to another, but the frictional force is always f sub k equals mu k n. Putting in n from here, we get mu k times w minus t sine theta equals 1.32 newtons. In your notes, please write down the numbers and verify the calculation. The x component of the tension is t sub x equals plus t cosine theta. It is positive because it points in the plus x direction. We choose cosine theta because t sub x is adjacent to angle theta. Since the weight w equals mg, we have m equals w over g equals 1.94 kilogram. The sum of the x components of forces is plus t cosine theta minus kinetic friction fk equals m times a, so a equals 14 meters per second squared. Here is the box being pushed to the right as it accelerates along the ground. Please press pause and identify the secret invisible forces that are acting on this box. Let's take the case of a 5 kilogram block that is pushed rightward along the floor having a coefficient of friction mu k equals 0.23. This is for an aluminum block sliding on copper. We have an angle theta equals 25 degrees and the magnitude of the push P equals 95.2 newtons. The force of kinetic friction points leftward because the block is moving rightward. The vector forces that act on the block are push P plus normal force N plus friction FK plus weight equals mass times the vector acceleration. We'll choose the usual x-y coordinate system with positive x to the right and positive y upward. Question A, what will be the acceleration of the block? To get the normal force n, sum the y forces first. We have the upward and positive normal force n minus the downward push p times sine theta because p sine theta is the vertical portion of the push. We choose sine theta because this side of the triangle, P sub y, is opposite the angle theta. We choose a minus sign because P sub y points in the negative y direction. Minus the downward weight mg equals mass times the y component of acceleration, which is zero, so the sum of the forces is zero. Solve this for the normal force n equals P sine theta plus mg. The weight and the downward vertical portion of the push P both squeeze the block against the floor and produce the normal force. In the previous problem, the normal force was reduced 
by the slightly upward tension of the string. The frictional force is F sub K equals mu sub K times the normal force. Taking the normal force from here, we get mu K times P sine theta plus mg. The sum of the X components of forces is P cosine theta minus the frictional force FK equals mass times acceleration. The X part of the push is P cosine theta because this side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle. In place of the kinetic frictional force, we substitute this equation to get this one. Solving for the acceleration, we get 13 meters per second squared. Question B. If the initial location x0 equals 0 and the initial velocity is 2 meters per second, how fast will the block be moving after it has been pushed 1.3 meters? The acceleration is constant, so v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a x minus x0, and we get the final velocity v equals 6.1 meters per second. Question C. If the block is traveling at 3.5 meters per second when push P is removed, how far will the block travel before stopping? With P equals 0, the sum of the Y forces is N minus MG equals 0, so the normal force is just the weight. The normal force varies from one situation to another, but the frictional force is always proportional to the normal force which is how greatly the two surfaces are pressed together. When the partially downward force P is removed, the block is no longer being squeezed against the floor as greatly, and this reduces the frictional force. Sum of the X forces is only the frictional force, which points in the minus X direction, and so minus mu kmg, which is ma, we cancel the masses and we get the acceleration is minus the friction coefficient mu k times g. Then v squared equals v0 squared plus 2ax minus x0 gives x equal 5.4 meters, as you should show in what you turn in. Please get a book, place a coin on it, and then see through which angle can you tilt the book before the coin slips. Please press pause and identify the secret invisible forces that act on the coin as it slides down the hill. We refer to the hill as an inclined plane. Here is the coin setting on the inclined plane, which has an angle theta. Gravity pulls the coin straight to the center of the earth. As gravity presses the coin against the surface of the incline, that surface pushes on the coin with the normal reaction force that is perpendicular to the surface. The velocity of the coin is down the hill, so the kinetic frictional force points up the hill. These force vectors have not been drawn to scale in order to leave room for all the writing that is yet to come. It is most convenient to put the positive x-axis down the incline in the direction of the acceleration. With this choice of coordinate system, there is no motion in the y direction. The usual coordinate system has the drawback that there would be motion and acceleration in both the x and y directions and the normal and frictional forces would both have to be broken into x and y components. When we choose the plus x axis to point down the hill, only the weight needs to be broken into x and y components, that is, the portion of the weight that points in the direction of the plus x axis and the portion of the weight that points along the y axis. To see that this angle is theta, first, See that angles B plus C add up to the 90 degree right angle. In this large triangle, the three angles add up to 180 degrees. Here's theta, 
This one is a 90 degree right angle, so angle B must be 90 minus theta. A moment ago we had B plus C equals 90. When we replace B with 90 minus theta, we get 90 minus theta plus C equals 90. Cancel the 90s and see that the angle C equals theta. We're often given the angle theta of the incline, and now we know to put angle theta here also, always. Now that we know that this is really theta, the x component of the weight is plus mg sine theta. It gets a plus sign because it points in our positive x direction, and it gets sine theta because this side of the triangle is opposite angle theta. The y component of the weight W sub y equals minus mg cosine theta. We choose a minus sign because it points in our negative y direction, and we choose cosine theta because this side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle theta. The sum of the y components of forces is plus n minus mg cosine theta equals mass times the y component of acceleration equals zero. So the normal force n equals mg cosine theta in this situation, which is reduced from the normal force that occurs on level ground, which was n equals mg. When theta equals zero, then we have n equals mg. Now that we know the normal force, the static frictional force, F sub s, is always the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Here it is mu sub s mg cosine theta. The sum of the x components of forces is plus mg sine theta minus the static frictional force equals mass times the x component of acceleration equals zero. Or when we replace the frictional force with this one, we have mg sine theta minus mu s mg cosine theta equals zero. Cancel mg and form tan theta equals mu sub s. Please put an object on a surface and then tilt the surface through angle theta until the object slips. Using tan theta, calculate the coefficient of static friction between the two materials that you are using. At a particular angle theta, the object slides down the hill at constant velocity. So kinetic friction is involved. The acceleration is still zero and we get tan theta sub k equals mu sub k. Between those two angles, stick slip motion might occur. At the largest angle with the velocity of the coin still zero, we get tan theta s equals mu s. At the increased angle where the velocity of the coin is constant, we get tan theta k equals mu k. Increase the angle a little more and the coin will slide down the hill with constant acceleration. We still have the sum of the y forces equals n minus mg cosine theta equals zero. So the normal force n equals mg cosine theta and the kinetic frictional force fk equals mu k mg cosine theta. The sum of the x components of forces equals mg sine theta minus the kinetic frictional force or mg sine theta minus mu k mg cosine theta equals ma. Canceling the mass, the acceleration of the object down the inclined plane is a equals g times sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Notice that this acceleration is independent of the mass, as matches our everyday experience. Here is a playground slide. The parent and child slide down the hill together, and they remain together. It does not occur that the parent has a greater acceleration than the child, and so gets ahead of the child. Both reach the ground together. Please test this with your backyard slide. Here is the angle theta. If theta equals 90 degrees, then the slide is very steep, but the acceleration is the same for both parent and child of large and small mass. 
we mistakenly expect large and small masses to fall at differing rates. We're okay with the two masses sliding together on the slide, but when falling straight to the ground, we expect the larger mass to hit the ground first. Before Galileo, we never used scales and clocks to test this mistaken assumption. When falling straight down due to the force of gravity, Newton's equation is the sum of the forces equals mg equals ma. The mass cancels, so all objects fall with the same acceleration g. Please drop large and small masses and see if they hit the ground together. Please write down the objects that you tried. Here is the book and the paper. Notice that if you put the paper on top of the book, both fall together. Back to the object sliding down the incline plane, but we add a push P that remains perpendicular to the surface. The forces are still the downward weight toward the center of the earth. Both the weight and the push press the block against the surface of the incline. And in reaction, the surface presses on the block with the force N that is perpendicular to the surface. As the block slides down the hill, the kinetic frictional force points up the hill. The sum of the y components of forces, we have plus n, because it points in our positive y direction, minus p, because it points in the negative y direction, and minus mg cosine theta, equals mass times the y component of acceleration, which is zero because there's no motion or acceleration in the y direction. We saw for the normal force n equals p plus mg cosine theta this time. Now that we know the normal force, the kinetic frictional force is fk equals mu kn equals mu k times p plus mg cosine theta. In the x direction, the sum of the x components of forces is mg sine theta minus the frictional force equals mass times acceleration. Substituting the kinetic frictional force, we get mg sine theta minus mu k times p plus mg cosine theta equals ma. This time, the mass does not cancel because there is no mass in this term. Let's change only the direction of the push P so that it is no longer perpendicular to the surface. If the push is small enough, the mass will still slide down the hill, and the kinetic frictional force will still point uphill. Push P acts at angle alpha relative to the plus Y axis. We need to know the X and Y components of the push since these are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we see that alpha is here also. The y part of the push is minus p cosine alpha as it points in the negative y direction. The x portion of the push, p sub x, is minus p sine alpha as it points in the negative x direction. The sum of the y forces then becomes n minus p cosine alpha minus mg cosine theta equals zero. The normal force in this situation is p cosine alpha plus mg cosine theta. The y portions of both of these are pressing the mass against the surface. The normal force represents how greatly the two surfaces are pressed together. The kinetic frictional force is proportional to the normal force it is mu k times the normal. And here is mu k times p cosine alpha plus mg cosine theta. 
The sum of the x components of forces is mg sine theta minus the frictional force minus p sine alpha equals ma or mg sine theta minus mu k times p cosine alpha plus mg cosine theta minus p sine alpha equals ma. And again, the mass does not cancel. If the push p is great enough, the mass moves up the hill. And this means that the kinetic frictional force points down the hill. The only change in the motion equation is that the sign of these two friction terms becomes positive instead of negative. Please solve this equation for the push p. Here is the mass being pushed up the hill. Push on the baseball to give it an initial velocity up the ramp. It travels up the ramp, slows, stops for a moment, and reverses direction, and rolls back down the ramp. The mass sets on the incline, and it is tied to the wall by this string. Please press pause while you identify which forces act on the mass. Identify the forces, and then write the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Gravity pulls the mass downward toward the center of the earth and against the surface of the incline plane. In reaction, the surface pushes on the block in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface. The mass would slide downhill, but the force of the string tension, T, and the force of static friction, Fs, occur in the minus x direction. Sum the y forces first to obtain the normal force and then the frictional force. Once again, the angle of the incline is theta here, and we put theta here also to obtain the x and y components of the weight. The portion of the weight that lies along the y-axis is minus mg cosine theta, and the x portion of the weight is plus mg sine theta. The sum of the y components of forces equals n minus mg cosine theta equals zero. So the normal force N equals mg cosine theta, and the static frictional force Fs always equals mu s N. Here it equals mu s mg cosine theta. The sum of the x forces is plus mg sine theta minus the static frictional force minus the tension equals mass times acceleration, or substituting in the static frictional force we have mg sine theta minus mu s mg cosine theta minus t equals ma. And again, the mass does not cancel. If the string were cut, what would be the motion of the mass? First, you have to calculate whether or not static friction is sufficient to hold the mass in place. If it is not, then the mass would accelerate down the incline. We see that every problem is done the same. The first step is to identify the secret invisible forces that are present. We choose an xy coordinate system so that we can then obtain the sum of the x forces and the sum of the y forces. That's the end of the physics. After that would be a little bit of algebra to solve for the unknown quantity.
Jab propulsion pushes this car up the incline plane. Please press pause to identify the secret invisible forces that are acting on this car. There is the downward weight, the normal force, the jet push up the incline, the air drag force, and the kinetic frictional force down the incline. Notice that the mass of the car plus balloon and its air is decreasing in time. The drag force changes in time as the velocity increases and the area decreases. Push a block with force P against the wall, which pushes back with the normal reaction force N. When push P is sufficiently great, then the block does not move, and static friction, Fs, points upward to resist the potential downward motion. The weight, W equals mg, points downward. When push P is too little, then the block moves downward along the wall so the kinetic frictional force, Fk, points upward. With the usual xy coordinate system, the sum of y forces is the upward and positive frictional force minus the downward weight. We have Fk minus W equals Ma. In the x direction, the rightward and positive push minus the leftward and negative normal force, P minus N, equals mass times the x component of acceleration, which is zero because there is no motion leftward or rightward. The frictional force is always Fk equals mu kn. Since the normal force n equals p in this system, we have Fk equals mu kn equals mu kp. But the x forces gave Fk equals ma plus w, Equating both of these, we have mu kp equals ma plus w. For a very important reason, this block is being pushed along the ceiling. Here is the free body diagram. We'll use the usual coordinate system. Push P occurs at angle theta and has these x and y components. Px equals P cosine theta. Py equals P sine theta. The secret invisible forces that act on the block are the push P, which presses the block against the ceiling. In reaction, the ceiling pushes downward with the normal reaction force. The gravitational force produces the weight mg, which also acts downward. As the block moves to the right, the kinetic frictional force points to the left. In the y direction, the sum of the forces is plus p sine theta minus n equals zero because there's no motion in the y direction. We have n equals p sine theta minus mg. This makes the kinetic frictional force Fk equals mu kn equals mu k p sine theta minus mg. The sum of the x components of forces is plus p cosine theta minus kinetic frictional force equals mass times the acceleration which occurs in the positive x direction or p cosine theta minus mu k times p sine theta minus mg equals ma. The acceleration vector always points in the direction of the net force vector. Place this spool of thread on the table and then pull on the thread, which is the direction of the net force. In which direction will the spool move?